This is the first video in a series where we investigate relativistic phenomena in a rotating reference frame. Inspired by a famous paradox by Paul Ehrenfest, let us begin by playing with the rotating wheel. Here's a fun way to measure the proper circumference of a rotating wheel or a circle. By proper circumference, we mean the length in the rotating frame where the wheel and its rim are at rest. Let's boost the rotating ring into a linear motion such that it's rolling without slipping. This Lorentz boost will not change proper lengths, which are invariant, although it will turn the circle into an ellipse and bend the spokes. More of that later. And now we can deduce the proper circumference with the following procedure. At each moment, the one segment that is touching the ground is momentarily at rest with respect to us. Thus, its proper length is just the usual length and we can measure it. Let us record that length and illustrate it by detaching that stationary segment from the rim. We can do this to each segment one by one as they come to the point of contact with the ground. Thus, we dynamically unwind the whole parameter into a line, which then must have the length of the proper circumference. And how long is this line with respect to the ordinary circumference of a circle? Let us compare them with a the simulation. Next to the relativistic rolling wheel, let's put a classical wheel and perform the unwinding process for both. The classical wheel completes the process faster resulting in the expected result of 2 pi times the radius. The relativistic wheel, although seemingly smaller, goes on for longer and results in a longer unwinded rim. In fact, it is longer by 1 gamma, where gamma is the Lorentz factor corresponding to the speed of the axis, or equivalently the orbital speed of the original non-traveling wheel. One way to explain this is through time dilation. The time runs slower for the rolling wheel, so it takes longer for it to complete one full rotation. But it will be moving with the same velocity all the time, so it has more time to travel. Thus, it will travel a longer distance during one period. That longer distance is equal to the unwinded line. This demonstrates that the circumference of a rotating circle is gamma times 2 pi times the radius. Here's another way to see it. Let us attach measure sticks along the circumference of a stationary circle. Then let us put the whole thing into rotation. The measure sticks, having tangential velocity, must exhibit Lorentz contraction. If we rotate the wheel fast enough, the sticks will be half their length. Thus, we can fit twice the number of measuring sticks along the rim. This means that the rim will have twice the length of a stationary rim. So, again, a rotating wheel has a greater circumference than a stationary one. But wait a minute. The rim of the wheel is also moving. So, should the rim itself be the one that is contracted? And the answer is yes, the rim also tries to contract. So do we have a paradox here? No. Since the first part was about measuring the circumference of an already rotating wheel, the second part was focused on accelerating the wheel from rest into a rotating motion. If you accelerate a physical object into rotating motion, the tangential elements will shrink, just as the measure sticks do. This will result in stress forces, and for a physical object, one of two things will happen. A rigid body will break. An elastic body 
will experience stress and possibly deform. Unlike in classical physics, in relativity, a perfectly rigid body is impossible to put into rotation without breaking it. To summarize, it is impossible to set an initially stationary wheel into rotation without causing stress forces. But if you have a rotating wheel, its proper circumference is indeed longer than that of a stationary one. This implies that the geometry of a rotating frame is non-Euclidean, but we will return to that in an upcoming video. The visual appearance of the rolling wheel is interesting. In particular, the radial spokes seem to bend in a curious manner. Let us give an explanation in terms of space-time geometry. We're focusing on 2 plus 1 space-time, in which the rotating spokes are represented by the simplified cross. The XY plane represents the present moment, or the plane of simultaneous events. The vertical axis represents time. The passing of time can be seen as a continual upwards travel in the vertical dimension. Or, if you like, it can be seen as the future flowing down to meet our plane of present time, before continuing to fall below into our past. Now in this view, all 2D objects with their pasts and futures become 3D shapes in space-time. The rotating cross turns into a spiral. Isn't it beautiful? Notice how the original cross is the intersection of the 3D spiral with the plane of present time. Stop the time for a moment. Consider another frame, which is moving with respect to this frame and the cross. As we know from Lorentz transforms, the plane of simultaneity of such a frame is tilted with respect to this one, like so. This tilting will deform the intersection with the spiral and the plane of present time. Let us switch into this moving frame with the Lorentz transformation. In this frame, the originally vertical spiral has tilted in turn, which manifests as a linear movement of the rolling wheel. And as we already saw, the shape of the intersection with this new plane of present time is deformed. This is why the spokes bend. So, the shift in simultaneity, once again, is the culprit of some rather unintuitive effects. The previous consideration have omitted the time it takes for the light to reach an observer's eyes. The toy figure represents our observer. The transparent wheel is the true, real-time position of the wheel but the solid wheel is how the observer perceives it. The retardation effect will have two main consequences. One, a moving object as a whole is always seen as more or less lagging behind the real-time object. Two, the shape of the object looks deformed. The solid wheel will appear to be moving faster when coming towards the observer than when moving away from the observer. The optical deformation will depend heavily on the position of the observer. The Doppler shifts are omitted in this video. There will be a follow-up video on the non-Euclidean geometry of a rotating frame. Wow, that's a mouthful. We shall also see what the world would look like in a rotating frame. Alright, that is it for today's video. Thank you for watching, I hope you learned something new, and I hope to see you again in the next one. Have a great day, or a good night, bye bye.